my Viper here has been printing uh, more or less non-stop for the past 10 days since I recorded uh, my setup video. Um, I'll put a link to that in the description. And um, I have to say that I'm, uh, I'm pleased. Uh, there have been no issues whatsoever. Uh, the, every print has, uh, has come out uh, you know, very good. Uh, no issues at all. Um, and I've gone through two, uh, just about two one kilogram spools of filament. So um, again, a fair amount of printing over a short period of time. Um, about all I've done is occasionally every three or four prints, I spritz it with a little 95%, I spritz the bed with a little 95% um, isopropyl alcohol and wipe it down with a, um, a microfiber cloth and uh, that's it. Um, the prints stick beautifully to the, to the bed and pop off just as easily um, when they're done just by flexing the bed a little bit um, or waiting until they cool and then they just come right off. So, um, so all in all, um, a very good, uh, um, a good printer for me and what I've been doing. Now, I have been using um, filament from the same company, Anycubic, um, and uh, that works perfectly with their, um, their uh, profile for Cura that they provided. And um, so um, I've been, you know, I bought uh, <clears throat> three more spools of it um, from them um, because it, uh, it's, it's matched so well. And what I was going for um, with this printer was uh, no fuss, ease of use. And that's given me that. Now in the future, I may experiment with other uh, filaments, um, but um, I have a bigger project that I'm working on um, with this printer, and so that's um, what I'm going to talk about uh, for the rest of the video. So let me move you over here. Before I ordered my 3D printer, I wanted to have a project uh, in mind, or several smaller projects, that would make good use of the printer. Okay, I didn't want to buy, um, buy something that I would never use. Um, and I came across um, something called the Mostly Printed CNC um, Project, uh, NPCNC, it's often abbreviated, um, by a fellow named Ryan of V1 Engineering. And um, basically you 3D print uh, most of the parts of the, uh, of the CNC machine um, and then um, the rails are uh, made from uh, regular steel electrical conduit uh, that uh, you can get at your home center. Um, and, <clears throat> and it just seemed like an intriguing, uh, an intriguing possibility to try and build that. So I did a lot of reading on it and uh, then I ordered my printer and as soon as it came uh, I got started on it. Um, now, um, here you can see I have uh, a bunch of the parts I printed. Uh, I labeled them and bagged them um, so that I know what they are. Okay, so that I have a kit essentially. Um, so you can see the, uh, the parts are all, are all done at this point. And um, once I started printing these and started cutting the, um, the conduit and fitting it and seeing that it worked, uh, I ordered uh, the kit from, um, from Ryan uh, that has all the, the rest of the components. Now you can source these all yourself, um, but you know he did such a great job designing and releasing this for free. Um, that uh, I just figured I'd save my, me time and give him um, some money in his pocket um, by ordering uh, the components uh, through him. So uh, there's everything from the controller boards and control screen, um, the drive screw for the Z-axis, uh, the stepper motors and belts, um, the, uh, the bearings, the nuts, the bolts, 
um, everything. So, um, so that's all set. Um, <clears throat> and, um, and so um, over the past couple of days, I've been um, making the base that this will be mounted to. Okay. Um, I bought a 4x8 sheet of uh, 3 quarter inch MDF, which is very um, dense and stable and should make a good base. Um, and I cut it to size uh, for, um, for my MPCNC. Now, the way this works is on his website, there is a configuration uh, page where you give it um, the dimensions of your work area and then it calculates how much space that's going to take up um, for the machine and what the lengths of your uh, conduit and belts will be um, so that you're all, um, you know, you can build this machine basically whatever size you want. Um, now, <clears throat> my hope, okay, and I realize this is, um, might not seem realistic, but my hope is to build a laser cutter. As I mentioned in the last video, um, I really enjoyed working with the commercial laser cutter that we had in my lab, and um, I find them to be a really very, uh, very useful tool, um, but they're also very, very expensive. Now, can I build a laser cutter with, you know, conduit from the home store and 3D printed parts? Um, I don't know. I'm going to try. Okay. Um, but my lab also had um, an X-Carve, uh, which is just sort of a kit CNC uh, machine that I attempted to work with um, when I was there. And so my expectations are realistic that, um, that you know, Building, building your own CNC is hard and building it, you know, without having a machine shop is, um, is you know, raises some issues for, uh, for the project. But like I said, my, my uh, expectations are realistic. And so the first phase of this is to assemble it and see if I can get it to work as a pen plotter. Okay, so that puts very little stress on the system. Um, but it checks to see if everything's working and if you've uh, got the software and the hardware working together or whatever. Now, um, <clears throat> I made, I designed for um, a rather large CNC by MPCNC standards. Okay, so this is going to be uh, pretty big because knowing that what I really wanted was a laser cutter, um, I started the configuration with the work area of the laser cutter that uh, my daughter and I were using at, uh, at the university and went from there. Okay, so because I, you know, we have designs that were designed for that cut area and we maximized the cut area. So that's where I, where I um, started size-wise and that's, uh, that dictated the size of the rest of the machine. So. Um, I'll show you um, in a little bit um, some video, probably I'll time lapse it because it's not terribly exciting, of me cutting and painting the base and getting it ready. Um, so first phase, assemble it, see if I can get it to work as a pen plotter. Okay. A second phase, um, I might install some sort of knife, uh, there are drag knives or reciprocating knives or whatever, um, to do light duty cutting. Okay, so with this sort of thing, um, it's like um, it's like the Cricut uh, machine um, that uh, Michelle demonstrated uh, a few weeks ago, and um, you know for cutting vinyl and fabric and, and uh, things like that. So that would be sort of a second phase test of uh, of my machine. Um, for a third phase, I may install. Um, a small, low-power uh, rotary tool um, you know, for cutting foam. I don't think I want to try and push it into wood um, and, and go, um, go that route. Because like I said, this is large okay, in design, 
um, because I wanted uh, to build a laser cutter and I know that a laser head puts no strain on, um, on the rails in the system whereas a, an active cutter does. An active cutter does put um, a, fair, uh, a fair amount of force on all the parts. Okay? And um, a lot of people build this system with um, uh, a small router okay? and really go at it machining uh, wood and even aluminum, but they build theirs much more, much smaller so that it's more rigid and can handle that, and I didn't go that route. So my expectations there are again realistic, okay? Moving a laser around or moving a mirror reflecting a laser around puts much less stress on the system. And so I don't want to, um, you know, I know that it can't take a lot of torque um, with the size that I'm building it, okay? And then if all of that works, okay, and it's a big if, I know, um, but if all of that works, then I need to think about do I want to, um, to go the uh, LED laser head route for the tool or the more powerful and more what I'm used to um, CO2 laser where um, you have a big high voltage laser tube and then reflect the laser around the, um, the machine and down into the cutting area. Okay, either way, um, laser light is dangerous, okay, so um, at that stage I will need to build an enclosure um, for, the, uh, for the laser to deal with the laser light and the smoke that they, they generate, and that needs to be vented, and I'll need a compressor to, um, to push the smoke out of the way of the laser as it's cutting, um, and um, and uh, you know, protective enclosure to protect our eyes so that nobody goes blind uh, working with it. So that's all way down the road. Um, this this uh, will likely be a very long term project, and there I will build. I will make videos of the build as I go and share them with you um, on the channel here. So. Um, <clears throat> We have our parts. I'm going to um, move these down to the basement location where I've uh, decided to build this, and um, and you may get a glimpse of that. Um, I'll do a montage now of um, some videos and photos I've taken um, of the process over the past ten days, and uh, see you in the next one. While I was talking there, this uh, print finished, and uh, so. Um, before we jump into the montage, I'll just show you, um, peel the thing off and the print comes right off um, and uh, 